After the successful launch of Chandrayaan-3, ISRO is now geared up for the launch of Aditya L1 solar mission on September 2nd. Both missions are meant for different purposes, but there is one common thing, that is, both the mission was and will be launched from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh. ISRO's previous launches, such as Chandrayaan-2 and Mangalyaan, were also launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. But why only HDSC at Sri Harikota? Doesn't ISRO have another launch site? The answer is no. The Satish Dhawan Space Center is the country's only spaceport from where spacecraft and satellites are launched. But why it is selected as a launch site? How it is the ideal location for launching satellites? Let's dive in to know the answer. But before that, please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to the Money Control YouTube channel. The hunt for the ideal launch pad for ISRO started in the 1960s when India decided to develop satellites and launch vehicles indigenously. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the founder of the Indian Space Research Program, led the program. As per the book, From Fishing Hamlet to Red Planet, India's Space Journey, edited by former ISRO scientist, Dr. Sarabhai asked his close associate E.V. Chitnis to look out for the launch site on the East Coast. The hunt for a spaceport was finally over when Sri Harikota, a small island in Andhra Pradesh located off the Bay of Bengal coast, was selected. There were two primary reasons behind the selection of Sri Harikota as the launch site. First, it is on the east coast, which facilitates the launching of the rockets in an easterly direction. Second, its proximity to the equator. As per the book, From Fishing Hamlet to Red Planet, India's space journey, launching a rocket eastwards can take advantage of Earth's rotation. For a launch site close to the equator, the magnitude of the velocity imparted due to Earth's rotation is about 450 meters per second, which can lead to substantial increase in the payload for a given launch vehicle. Geostationary satellites necessarily be in the equatorial plane. So, for such satellites, the closer the launch site is to the equator, the better it is. The book also added that Sri Harikota was a largely uninhabited area closer to the sea. This ensured that the flight path of launch vehicles or rockets is entirely over the sea so that the impact of separated rocket hardware can take place on the high seas without any constraints. Finally, the launch site of Sri Harikota was operational on October 9, 1971 when Rohini 125, a small sounding rocket, was launched. Today, Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota is a launch site equipped with two launch pads. The center has a separate launch pad for launching sounding rockets. It provides the necessary launch base infrastructure for sounding rockets of ISRO and for assembly, integration and launch of sounding rockets and payloads. But why was the launch site named after Satish Dhawan? In 2002, after the death of former ISRO chairman and scientist Satish Dhawan, Sri Harikota High Altitude Range was renamed to Satish Dhawan Space Center to honor his contribution to the Indian space mission. After the sudden demise of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Satish Dhawan succeeded him as ISRO chairman in 1972 and continued till 1984. As per ISRO's website, in the decade following Satish Dhawan's appointment, he directed the Indian space program through a period of extraordinary growth and spectacular achievement. His efforts led to operational systems like INSAT, a telecommunications satellite IRS, the Indian Remote Sensing Satellite and the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle PSLV that placed India in the League of Space Faring Nations. Today, he is remembered as the father of experimental fluid dynamics research in India for his contribution. Over the years, Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota has witnessed numerous successful launches, including tech development launches, Indian spacecraft launches, student satellite launches, day entry missions, and the launch of foreign satellites from 23 countries. And now, all eyes are on ISRO's next Aditya L1 solar mission.